Oops, this one is covering it. <laughs> uh, how can we make Kevin seem? Do this, okay. Move, buddy. Move, bud. Hold on, hold on. We have to get rid of the chair. Yup. Oh, how do I get rid of the chair? Okay, we made it. Yup. Oh. Move, move, move. Back, 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 back. All right. Let me just finish setting up. Fan. Stop. Okay. Oh man, it's not working. Is it working? Working. Good evening. Uh huh. There. It's working. Okay. Thanks. Because it's not working on my laptop. Something's wrong. Learn more. I feel like YouTube is glitching for some reason. Yep, it's glitching, but so long as the chat is working, that's good enough. Okay. Yikes. Hold on. There. Hi! <laughs> Hi, Hayes. <laughs> okay, it's working. Awesome. See, there's something wrong with YouTube. I can't, I can't load it. Even the, the app is not working properly. Okay, this time it's for real. I have set a timer to limit this <laughs> live to 30 minutes only because I have stuff to do tomorrow morning. Okay. It's working. Hi, good evening. There he is. Do you see how small this poodle is? Let me show you in comparison. Mm. This is Bailey and Finn. Where are you? Over here. Over here, bud. Wait. Do you see how tiny he is? So, yep, absolutely tiny dog. Okay. All right, let's just wait for maybe a couple more minutes and then let's begin. The goal is to end at 11.30 this time. <laughs> Finn is so tiny, okay? So today will be all about Finn and maybe the questions that we constantly get for new puppies because we have a lot of upcoming videos all about um, raising a new puppy um, as you guys have requested a lot. Feel free to ask all the questions that you want to ask or give ideas of what kind of training videos that you guys want to see about Finn. I already have like a few in store, for example, an updated um, potty training video and then also the introduction. If you have dogs at home and then you're going to bring in a new puppy, there's one video on that as well. And then uh, how to desensitize them and socialize them to grooming tools because I've been getting a lot of questions. How is it that my dogs are so calm when it comes to grooming and stuff? 
those are very useful. And then I also have one in for food manners. And then puppy play biting. And what was the other one that I, I was shooting the other day? Uh, play biting and... And I forgot. <laughs> but there's another one that I had in store. And if you guys have any other ideas, feel free to just shoot them on the chat and I'd be happy to um, talk about it or maybe add it to the list of things to make. Okay. All right. So at the end, before we end also, I will be sharing with you the prizes for the raffle that I promised the giveaway. And then again, YouTube has been having a glitch because it hasn't been working for the raffle. So I might have to do it in another separate video. I, I'm not going to do a live whatsoever. I'm just going to do it in the Instagram stories and then post it as well in the Facebook so that you guys have access to it. And I will also be posting it in the community tab so that it, it's more convenient for everyone. For those who don't have Instagram, YouTube, or um, all the other platforms, or maybe even TikTok. Because I know not everyone has all the social media platforms. Okay? So shall we begin? If you guys have any questions about Finn, just shoot them all there and we will answer as many questions as we can until 11.30. All right, let's begin. Okay, so I promised to introduce Finn. So this is Finn. Buddy, come here. Oh no, he went to sleep. Come here. Come on. Have treats. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. There you go. <laughs> Not for you, me. Not tonight. Come on, buddy. Come on. Wait, let me just go get him. <laughs> Come on, bud. He's too li He's so light. <laughs> So it's very easy to carry him with one hand. So this is Finn. Um, we got him, I think, three weeks ago. So I've actually been holding back on the information that we got him already. I was starting out on the training videos and stuff with him. Uh, he is four months old. I don't know if you guys will believe me, but yes, this tiny pup is already four months old. He's going to be turning five in a few weeks so he is an extra extra small poodle i remember talking about it in one video before how there are pups you you well you know you cannot control genetics and he is one of the runt of the litter he was actually the last the last in the litter that was released from the breeder and he is the tiniest one of them all i'm not sure if um his siblings were as small as him, but I did get to meet the parents and they were an okay size, <laughs> but we were so shocked to see him mm, this tiny. We got him at almost four months, so that's he was around three and a half months old and he turned four months with us last week, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. He's really, really, really small. He weighed around, I think, 0.7 kilograms. So that's around 700 grams <laughs> when we first took him to the vet. And now he weighs <laughs> one kilo. <laughs> We're at this one over here. You see how giant this one is? She's been gaining weight. So she, Bailey is around four kilograms and ideally she's only she should only be around 3.5 but it has been hard since she was spayed she's her appetite has increased like tenfold and she's been trying to steal the food of summer a lot not to mention we have been limited when it comes to um walking the dogs because of the, uh, you know the pandemic and everything so yeah this pup will most likely be around 2 kilograms at most, I think, or around 2.5, depending on how chubs he can get. Because surprisingly, he doesn't exhibit um, the characteristic of being picky 
when it comes to eating as of yet. Yet. But he has been trying to steal the girl's food. He's currently still on kibble because that was what he his breeders are feeding him. And we have just been following that. Okay. Can I let Finn out? Where can I let him out? <laughs> like, let him loose? Right now? I, I, I can, but he's gonna be running around and I will not be able to show him in the video at all. So this is our setup in my room. Um, it's already sleepy time for him and he usually stays there. This is to protect um, the furniture because I just replaced my bed because you never know what they will do. Although he's so small and his teeth are so tiny that I don't think he will even um, be able to damage the furniture at all because her teeth, his teeth are really, really, really tiny. Right, bud? And <laughs> he's actually not my puppy. So for those who are asking why I got a male dog, he's actually not mine. He is my cousin's puppy and I have just been asked to train him for a couple of weeks. So he will be with us for maybe another one or two weeks. And then that's it. He's going to be going to his home with my cousin. So <laughs> he's pretty chill now. But when I got him, oh my gosh, I have never, ever experienced a puppy that loud. Ah! There we go. I remember the other video, how to um, stop puppy barking, like barking crazy and um, separation anxiety because it's kind of related to that. So when I got Finn, this is not possible with this pup before. Uh, when you put him down, he will bark nonstop. The first night was a nightmare because he would not stop barking nonstop until somebody carries him because apparently when I talked to the breeder I asked because I had to tell the breeder I'm like oh my gosh what is wrong with your puppy why why is he like this my I, I've never I never experienced that with Summer and Bailey where they will bark non-stop for attention I'm not exaggerating when I say that it took at least an hour or maybe two hours for him to literally stop and get tired of barking and crying and whining like crazy. It's not even the, 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 the simple whining. It's a really, really loud, screechy bark slash cry slash whining. And oh, I, I, I will never forget the first night because man, I, Normally, when I do training, it's usually just a waiting game for me with the dogs because I wait for them to show me a behavior and then I click and reward the behavior that I want. So, it was also a waiting game with him, but the thing is the waiting game was a really, really, really extra, extra long one, huh? You, he really... Oh, you, you guys will see it. I was able to document some, but... <laughs> The thing is, oh lord, I felt so bad for our neighbor because our neighbor, um, they're all men in their house and they, you will not hear a single sound from their house. You wouldn't even think there are people there, but yeah. And then there's this puppy who suddenly came into our lives and he was just so noisy. I felt so bad. And that was for two weeks. Imagine two straight weeks of nonstop barking every single night. And even in the morning, I think when he, when, when somebody wakes up, he, if he knows that there's somebody, there's a human who's going to be ready to listen to him, he's going to start barking nonstop. So it was, it was, it was, it was a nightmare. Okay. So let's get on with some questions. Um, I know it's a, it, a, it's a little at random because um, I'm going to be talking about it in future videos as well. I don't want to be saying the same things over and over again. But feel free to ask as much questions. Even if I will be having a videos on them, I will be answering them here. Just shoot them all in the chat. Here we go. All right. So Nikki Lin Sumagaisai. Hi, what is your opinion? 
about a very long pet transport. My baby poodle needs to go through four hours of travel because of the border restrictions here in Mindanao. How can I prepare for when she arrives? I've only had one experience of transporting a pet and that was um, to Thailand, but it was never really a puppy. It really, the preparation is more on the breeder who will be transporting your puppy more so than you. Of course, you're going to be preparing for your puppy in um, the arrival, but it depends on how they would really handle the... <laughs> it depends on how they would handle the pup and the training and stuff. Because sadly, and I'm not trying to overly generalize, um, breeders here in the Philippines don't really do a lot of training or socialization with the pups. It's more... I still think it depends on whom, from whom you will get the pup from, but more often than not, they're just really just breeding the dog to sell the dog to somebody else and then transport the dog and then they're there. So maybe what you can just do, if you, I was in your shoes, when the pup gets home, of course, be prepared as much as you can to clean them up because more often than not, they will do their business inside the crate and you can't control that. But it also depends on how old the puppy is because when we transported Finn, since he's four months, he was able to hold it. And well, then again, he was being carried because he didn't want to go inside the crate. So when we picked him up, my cousin was with me, Summer, please don't kill my laptop. Um, my cousin was the one who was um, cuddling him on the um, passenger seat when we picked him up because he wouldn't go inside the crate. So um, for your pup, I guess as soon as you can, get them out of the crate once you get them. But also be prepared that this, they will stink because they might uh, stress pee or stress poo inside the crate and nobody will really be cleaning that up. So get ready with a lot of cleaning stuff, sprays, and whatever you can. And I suggest not feeding the puppy right away, but uh, be ready with water. For sure your pup will be thirsty since it's a four hour drive or a ride through the boat or maybe a plane. It really depends. Um, would you have an idea what transportation method um, will be used for your puppy? Will it be through air or by by sea or by car. Can I let Finn out? Oh, here, he's out. <laughs> he's very chill when you carry him, actually. He just gets really, really, really rowdy when you let him loose because he wants all the attention to himself. When is the giveaway? Today is the giveaway. I will be announcing. I will try to draw the raffle live, but as I showed you earlier, YouTube has been getting glitches and it has been consistent with um, the analytics. So I'm not sure if the app will work because I have one. All right, Finn is literally sleeping on your hand. Yeah, uh, he's a very cuddly pup. He, I'm not so sure if he's gonna be chill, but he's pretty chill when he's being carried like this. He, he's pretty much a lap dog, I think. He doesn't mind being carried like this. Probably because the breeder did the same thing when he was a pup. Apparently, this is what they did. Every time he starts barking and crying and everything, or whatever Finn wants, Finn gets from the breeder. Which was why that behavior was reinforced. So when we got him, of course, that same rule will not apply in my house. Because my mudra will murder me and my siblings as well as my dad and not to mention we're gonna get a lot of complaints from the neighbors so that was something i didn't want that was an, an unacceptable behavior not to mention the girls are getting stressed and it causes a lot of issues in the long run so i had to stop it but it takes a lot to correct some behavior that is already reinforced well I guess it depends from dog to dog as well. 
this pup is very stubborn and he will try to get whatever he wants. And he, this is what he wants. All the attention, all the cuddles and everything. If you don't give it to him, he's not going to stop. Which was why it took us two weeks for him to actually stop the barking and the crying and the whining and asking for attention. Yes, this is a toy poodle. Now, he was actually being marketed to me as a teacup or a tiny toy poodle. But there's no such thing as I have mentioned. No matter how small a poodle is, so long as they fall under 10 inches for the AKC standards or for FCI 11 inches, they are still toy poodles. The extra, extra small ones are just extra small toy poodles. There is no such thing as teacup and um, tiny toy. They're all toys. But he is one extra, extra small toy poodle because he will probably be half the size of my girls. I'm pretty sure of that. Yay. Okay. So Christian Athlete, do you pluck Summer and Bailey's ears? I don't, but my groomer does because we've had an experience where in summer had ear mites and it does um, prevent such um, infestations from happening. But only I only have it plucked for as long as they can tolerate it. I don't really have them like thoroughly cleaned it. And my groomer has a way of doing it. I'm not sure if I was able to take a video of it, but I did document the first home service grooming that they had at home. And I was able to see everything that he does. And man, the way he does it for the ears, I never thought of doing it like that. And it was still painful and uncomfortable, but it, it really, really lessened the discomfort on the girls, especially for summer. Because Bailey is very brave and um, she tolerates pain a lot, but with Summer, of course, she's my little drama queen. So he was able to clean her ears thoroughly as well. How many times? So, Gavino Dizon, how many times do you feed them? The puppy or the older pups? So, for the adults, they only eat twice a day, but I do give them extra meals, meaning treats in between because of Bailey's um, gastro and um, tummy problems. So like I said, they, sh they tend to have very acidic stomachs and Bailey has that case. He, she has either sometimes hyperacidity or acid reflux and it's been getting worse over time. So they get, before they have breakfast, they get a snack in the morning, so it's a treat. And then they have breakfast at around maybe 7 or 8 p.m. Depends. And then for lunch, they get another treat, maybe just a chew or a, a, a jerky treat or something just to make sure that their tummies are not empty and that the acids don't eat up the stomach and stuff. Summer doesn't really have that problem. It's just that if you give one, you have to give both. And then one at night, of course. And then before they go to sleep, I, before I go to sleep, I give them another snack. So it's just really to make sure that there won't be um, hyperacidity attacks. As for Finn, he eats three times a day. So one in the morning, noon, and then at night. Okay, Nikki. Nikki Maza. If my dog... What? Sorry, my eyes aspirates after she eats like most of the time is this something to be concerned of what first aid should should i do hmm it depends on how often it happens i think it might be best to ask your vet because my dogs don't really it don't that those things don't happen to my dogs more often than not i don't Unless there's something wrong with them, it doesn't really happen to at least my girls. But again, every dog is different. So I feel like I have a cat. I'm holding a cat. Uh, so I think it depends from dog to dog. Maybe you can try observing your pup first and then see if it's something normal. Because it's, it's really hard because 
every pup is different, every their behaviors. But if you're really uncertain, it might be best to check with your vet. It never hurts to check with your vet. Um, this is what I mean by, you know, you. It, it's nice if you can form good relationships with, find a vet that you will resonate with. Um, I'm not exactly telling you to like, become the, the best of friends, but, but eventually you will. You'll, you'll know when they're ready and stuff. And sometimes you can contact them directly. With our vet, um, I'm able to contact them uh, through their Facebook page or Instagram and stuff. And I do try to message to there, but it's still no guarantee. I only ask when I'm sure that, you know, it's not like a big emergency and stuff. Oh, you're getting impatient, huh? You want to go down. Um, but don't be entitled to the point that you will demand the answer. From. Are you a bird? Um, that you will demand the answer from them because they're really not obliged to do that. It's your, you, it's your responsibility to take your dogs to the vet. And, um, you know, they have their lives too after work hours and I just feel bad that there are people who are you know imposing and get frustrated when they don't get a, res a response I mean just think of it in a way that what if it, that were you like your boss asking you something and then gets mad at you for not replying when you are already out of office hours and you want to have some family time and stuff I mean they're people too right so yeah, I suggest asking asking your vet. Observe first, and then if you still think that it's not something normal, then take them to the vet. The same thing was told to my breeder, my size as Finn. So for Finn, he doesn't have that um, thing that you mentioned, and it only happened when he was dewormed a couple of days ago. And when he had his shots, that was the first, because the first few shots, he never had some sort of reaction. But the second time, he started vomiting when we arrived home. Um, he vomited his food maybe three times or four times. And we called the vet to ask, and they said that, you know, it might be just his stomach reacting to the medicine. But thankfully, it's already 30 minutes after he was able to take the deworming meds. So it should be fine. And then the vet just said to observe so long as he doesn't vomit again all throughout the night, then it should be okay. But he did exhibit um, unusual behavior the next day. I think it was because of the shots. He was, he was kind of lethargic. And I think he had a slight fever because he's not as active and he wouldn't play with the girls as much. And he wouldn't eat as well. But we were always in contact with his vet and they said it might be just the meds and if things improve the next day, which, which is what, what, what happened, uh, there was no need for us to take him back. Right, bud? You're back to normal today. All right. Next question. What do you suggest more buying poodle from a breeder or a pet shop like Gartemar? Uh-huh. That's a tough one. Uh, I definitely discourage getting from Cartemar. Okay, for those who are in other countries, Cartemar here in the Philippines is like a big hub where there are a lot of pet shops that sell pets. And they're not exactly in the best of conditions because they just randomly buy them in bulk from puppy millers to buy and sell themselves. I know, buddy. You stink! He ha he's not allowed to take a bath for uh, five days. And this dog is one dirty dog. Like, uh, he is far <laughs> from what Summer is and is maybe three or four times what Bailey is. Because, ay, uh, nako. His, fa his favorite place in the house is the garden. And what he does there is he digs around and everything. Thankfully, my mom hasn't seen it yet because she's going to murder me. But it's okay. You're going to be saying goodbye to me soon. I'm going to miss you though. Even if you're like this and naughty and gave me a hard time. 
So, buying from breeder and Cartemar. I guess it depends on the breeder that you will be getting the puppy from. But <laughs> honestly, the breeders that I know, that the really, really, really good breeder that I want to get from, who doesn't breed even, um, I would have to agree with her that there is sometimes no lesser evil here in the country when it comes to poodles anymore because the breeding line has thoroughly been sadly destroyed for the toy poodles and there have been efforts to kind of get better by importing lines but sad to say they're only bringing them in to raise the prices of the pups I mean don't get me wrong the breeders here, even if they're puppy millers, I sincerely believe and think that they also do really, really love their dogs. But nonetheless, it is their bread and butter. And it's just my selfishness. Okay, he's getting, he's getting restless. I think he wants to go down. Okay, I have to put him down. Okay, buddy. All right. There you go. So, they do love their dogs but they do make money out of their dogs and it's just my selfish opinion and um, selfish belief that it should not be the case but again we are all different people i respect them for who they are so long as they're doing it for their right reasons and so long as they take care of the dogs very well let's just leave it <laughs> at that but if that were me I prefer getting from the lesser evil breeder that fits to my standard. I mean, please don't use whatever I say as your golden rule for everything. You will make your own compromises just as we have made our own compromise with Finn. I'm, I said it many times of um, my opinions about the breeders, but nonetheless, my cousin did want a dog and we had to get a dog. She was not willing to import. She was not willing to pay the, uh, and do the extra mile to get from a proper breeder that we first um, scouted with one of my really good friends. So I have to respect that. And Finn was the compromise. It's not the best decision. I'm not saying it's a wrong decision either, but it is what we had to deal with at that moment. So what's more important for me is you know what you're getting yourself into so that there's no pointing fingers of who to blame when things go wrong in the future. So whatever happens to Finn, we accept things as they, uh, things as they are and we will face the problems head on. Okay. All right, next question. At what stage do you have to train your puppy? I got mine a week ago. Okay, for training, training begins the minute you bring home your pup. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the first video. I'm pretty sure I did. So as soon as I got Finn, training started right away. So I started with crate training and potty training with him for the first day, which was why it was a nightmare because he was not very happy with the crate. So I did everything I know that could possibly make him comfortable inside the crate in the book. Um, he wasn't fearful, unlike Bailey, who was really scared of the crate. He entered the crate right away. Um, he would go in and out, we would play, and then he would still enter and go out. But nonetheless, the crying was just because he wanted my attention. He wanted everybody's attention. And that was what he was trained for. Every time he cries and makes a really, really loud noise, he gets picked up, which was why that was the habit that we had to break. We had to change his routine. And he wasn't very happy with that. And he was <laughs> very generous to share how unhappy he was about it. So... I did the Kong method wherein you would leave a treat inside. So he would just finish the treat and then start whining and crying and barking and everything nonstop. So 
every training method will work for certain types of dogs, but there are dogs that <laughs> would be exceptional too. So with training, I also believe that um, there's no one set of rules in doing one thing. For example, there are people who work best with Cesar Milan style, and then there's also Victoria, what's her, what's her last name? Victoria Justice? <laughs> I forgot her last name, but she has a YouTube channel. It's me or the dog or something. I, I love watching her too. I learn a lot from her videos. So there's that method. And then there's another method wherein it's all positive reinforcement and everything. So um, don't feel forced to just believe one. I always believe in, you know, testing out different things because believe me, every dog is different. And there are so many things that will work for other dogs using, let's say, Caesar Milan's method but will not work for other dogs because they could be fearful or something and it would just scare them and etc. So it really depends. Find the training method that works best for your pup and one that you're most comfortable with. So start as soon as possible. Okay. Is Finn's ears, ear stand up? It's the same for my toy poodle recently. I have dogs, it's a poodle. Okay, so the reason why I am very against um, producing extra, extra small dogs is because they breed a, an extra, extra, extra small pup to another extra, extra small pup. Usually those two pups are the runts or... Um, the ones that are usually, let's say, if it's in the wild and they're not domesticated and stuff, the moms usually discard those pups because they're the ones that have the least chances of survival. But they survive because they're already domesticated. So you bring one pup that's like that, that could possibly have some genetic, um, uh, what do you call that? Genetic issues or something. Not necessarily problems. But, and then you breed it with another one that's like that. Chances are there are uh, kind of tweaks in the genetics, which is why you produce extra, extra small dogs with certain deformities. There is a website on uh, Google. Try to search teacup poodle. And it's the first website that you will see. I just don't want to name names. But you will see there that the pups are really extra cute. They look like teddy bears. But you will also see certain deformities, meaning some dogs have their ears standing. There's one ear that's standing and then there's one ear that's going down. But they are still pure poodles. It's just what happens with genetics. For example, Summer does not fall under the breed standard. She's actually much longer. Poodles have a square, has to have a, like a square um, body type, wherein the length of the torso should be the same length as the two legs of your dog. That's the breed standard of a poodle. Summer doesn't fall under that. It's Bailey who actually falls more under the breed standard. That's why more often than not, Summer gets mistaken as a Bichon per se, because Bichons ha have longer torsos and they have shorter and stubbier legs. But she is a purebred poodle. Trust me, we tested her genetics and she's 100% pure. And her difference with the Bichon is her paws are much thinner and um, a little bit longer than a Bichon because Bichons have um, stubbier paws. She only has shorter paws. Uh, she just has a longer torso, but her legs are still thin and uh, <laughs> sexy. <laughs> I like poodles. Okay, so those are the traits. It also helps if you study the breed standard, which I never did honestly, when I got them. Uh, I had different priorities back then. <laughs> okay, John Garcia is asking, I am wondering how big Summer and Bailey is full grown. I have a four month toy poodle and he's literally the smallest. May I know how big they get? Poodle, toy poodles should, here in the Philippines, we follow the FCI already. Um, they've shifted from AKC. So long as your pup will fall under 11 inches, they will still be toys. So the maximum height is 11 inches. 
for toy poodles. Summer is 8.5 inches in height. So it's usually from there, the base of the front paws all the way to the withers over here for the dogs. That's how you measure the height of your dog. So summer is 8.5. Bailey is 9 inches, if not 10 inches in height. 9.5 maybe. Because I measured it. Because I was worried that they weren't pure toy poodles. And I was worried that Bailey was a miniature before. But nonetheless, it, it, it's, it's no big deal. What's more important is they're healthy. Trust me, height and all these superficial features that you guys, that we all worry about, that I used to worry about, is nothing compared to health. Believe me, because health is wealth. My dog knows how to shake, sit, stand, fetch, and she's potty trained too. What should you teach next? Have you taught them food manners? Food manners is very important because you never know when you will have kids over and you know how they are with dogs. They just want to play with them and where, where, when they're eating, you, they would start petting them. That's most scary. Or you can also teach them how to release toys so that when somebody wants to play with them, they will not get aggressive when it comes to you taking back the toys and they won't be guarding that. Another thing is you can also teach them how to respect the space on the doors so that there won't be any accidents that they will just dart off the minute they see something that um, kind of triggers them. For example, for Bailey, it was the cat. Any stray cat, any stray dog that moves will trigger her. So I had to stop her from um, darting off the the the, 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 the the door. What else? Socializing them to things that they have to get used to in the human world. For example, the car. Those are really, really important to get them used to as puppies because when they're much older, I'm not saying that you, you know, you, you, you can always teach old dogs new tricks. It really works, but it just takes a little longer. But as puppies, they're like sponges. They, they, they learn so fast. Okay, so I found a black and white Maltipu at 400 a pure white poodle that costs 600 Should I spend the extra $200? for a purebred poodle, or is the Maltipoo just fine? This is a very controversial topic, which as much as possible, I don't want to dive into. But if you will ask me, I do not support um, designer dogs, meaning crossbreeding without purpose, because ask the breeders why they do it in the first place. If they if they give you an answer that resonates with your beliefs and um, values, by all means, um, take the pup. But if they don't have like a valid reason for it, and maybe they just say that it's cute, for what reason other than earning a little bit of extra cash, but Wow, um, you're actually quite lucky because as far as I know, in Singapore, the crossbred pups are more expensive than the purebred pups, meaning let's say the pure poodles or the pure um, Yorkshire Terriers or purebred Maltese. The crossbreeds are more expensive because they're being promoted as cuter and friendlier and yada, yada, yada. So it, re it really depends on the... On the person. For example, I'm not saying that I support uh, crossbreeding a poodle with a golden retriever, but I do understand what they're trying to do. It's because they want to lessen the shedding and this and that. So that for me, uh, in some ways, can't, well, I'm not exactly saying I accept it because I still don't like the idea because for me, golden retrievers are perfect as they are. And so are standard poodles. They're, they are perfect as they are. I don't understand why you have to cross them to get something. And then you don't even know what will come out of it because you, know, you, can't, you can't control genetics. 
we have no way of controlling genetics. It will be at random. There will be golden, um, golden doodles that don't shed, but there are a lot that shed too because it depends which genes will, they will get from the parents. And more often than not, the personalities are also sometimes out of whack. So it's really scary. So I, I, as much as I can, I really don't support um, crossbreeding. But I'm not saying that it's bad to get like a multiple or if you have a multiple, it, it, you, you got, you're a, ter a terrible person. No, that's not what I meant. I'm only saying that if it hasn't been done, then it, it's, for me, it's better not to do it at all. But if it's there and you're trying to save a pup, by all means, go for it. Whatever, whatever resonates with you. But I'm loyal to the poodle breed, so I would get the pure poodle. That's just me. <laughs> what size of crate do you use for Summer and Bailey? I just use this crate. They actually fit in there. Um, Summer and Bailey can fit in there. They tried to enter. <laughs> Which was the funniest thing, but I wasn't able to shoot it. Uh, they barely fit, but they can fit. This is the smallest size of um, travel crates. But I actually got rid of Summer and Bailey's crate already, which was why I had to buy a new one for Finn. I reasoned... Kar Karen K. Kasusu. I recently subscribed to your channel. Thank you for subscribing. That's... How I even bought my puppy. Thank you for answering my question. Sending love from Africa. Hi, thank you so much. Okay, next. When did you get your toy poodles? How much? Uh, for which one? Finn? Okay, Finn is not mine. Summer and Bailey, I got them in 2014. That was the first year of me working as a professional. <laughs> That's kind of giving away my age. But who cares? So that yeah, my first salary went to summer. <laughs> How much? Um, I prefer not to announce it publicly because my family will murder me. They, I'm hoping. I, I'll just pray that they're not watching it. I'll give you a range. I think I got them for, let's say, six hundred to eight hundred dollars each okay Mika Tan my poodle doesn't want to eat I have tried switching dog foods she barely drinks too what do I do mixing carrots worked for a while and she only poops and pees one time once a day is that normal she is very active okay poodles are naturally picky eaters they I it, it's it, it's consistent uh, except for Bailey so far and maybe this one is an exception but everyone else especially this one they become natural picky eaters especially when they used to have their dog food so I'm not saying it is the solution but what worked for me was switching them to all natural meals so I cook for my dogs and I sometimes feed them raw and for the drinking problem I suggest getting a water fountain. Moving water kind of encourages them to drink because Summer hasn't had any problems when it comes to drinking. She always drinks a lot, but Bailey was my problem because she has been the sickly pup and she has a lot of gastro, uh, kidney issues, liver issues, what else, name it, she has it. And the only thing that kind of helped with that and her dehydration was the water fountain because since I got it, her... Um, her levels when it comes to the tests for the liver and kidney became normal. And it was also the help of the supplements. And then peeing once a day, I don't think that's a big problem, probably because your pup doesn't drink a lot. So of course, there, um, the amount of time, the number of times that they need to go will depend on how much they consume, which is why that relates to puppies. When I was doing the potty training and the crate training and everything, it has to be side by side because the crate training supports the potty training. I control when 
she has access to certain things. So for example, the drinking, I limit it during meal times so that I would be able to predict when they need to go. That way I lessen the mistakes. So that kind of speeds up the potty training. So yeah. Do poodles get a lot of health issues? Generally, poodles are not, um, don't have a lot of health problems. It really depends on the breeder. But again, I only emphasize how sickly Bailey is. It's not because of the breed itself, but because of the practices here in our country of the local breeders. Um, nobody really health tests here. What they breed for is usually either the size and mostly color. And reds are one of the most popular colors here in the Philippines. And there are only a few lines, so they would breed and breed and breed, and which is why they produce um, certain pups like this. But no, they don't have a lot. Because summer over here has never really been confined for anything serious. She was confined once, which was around two years ago when I flew to the US. And it was only because she was feeling lonely that I wasn't there. So she made me spend <laughs> around, how much was it? 400, $500 just to get her to stay in the <laughs> hospital <laughs> and spend money. But there was really no findings. Everything was normal. She was fine. But she had to stay there for observation for five days. My God, the bill was a nightmare. Yes, poodles are amazing breeds. I absolutely love the breed so much. I also just got a puppy. Congratulations on getting your puppy. I don't know how to, I'm so sorry if I pronounce your names um, incorrectly. Ayo Loanis? Okay, tiny teeth can still damage. My tiny baby was 1.0 and at 10 weeks and ruined my crown molding. I am so sorry to hear that, but um, Finn so far hasn't damaged anything, thankfully. Even the uh, furniture downstairs, he chews on them, but probably because he, he's not a heavy chewer. Uh, an, an example would be these two girls. They were exactly the same size as puppies, but Summer, the only thing she killed were cords of my chargers and phone chargers as well as the ones for my laptop and my slippers that are made of rubber and she didn't really destroy them it was more of puncturing through the rubber i think it's because her um teeth are itchy at that time oh my gosh we are running again at one hour so much for my schedule anyway yeah for Finn, he hasn't. Uh, the only thing he has chewed on so far is Bailey's favorite rubber ducky. I feel so bad. I'm trying to hide it from her because that is one of her most favorite toys. And it was a gift from one of her friends. But thank you for the warning. Uh, I have been trying to prevent him from chewing and encouraging him to chew on his toys. I think that also helps. So yes, Finn isn't mine. She is my aunt slash cousin because it was my aunt who asked for him, but I don't know what happened. It turns out it was actually for my cousin. So she has been sleeping over with Finn for the last couple of weeks, but she's back and forth because she's still studying. Thank you for answering my questions. You are most welcome. I came across your videos as suggested here on YouTube and I enjoy. I'm, I'm really gl glad that you are enjoying it and I'm happy that it brings value to you guys. Okay, so Christina Ashley, based off your experience, what is the number one thing you would recommend socializing the puppies to? Number one? There are a lot, but socializing, socializing. 
if there is one thing I think it would be socializing them to people like being able to accept strangers no matter what because it was such a big issue for my family before um, I don't know if I've mentioned it in a live before I had a my first dog was a chihuahua and he wasn't a bad dog it's just that he wasn't trained very well and he doesn't take to strangers a lot so all my cousins and everyone in the family are always scared of her so nobody really comes to our house to come over because they they're scared of Sam because every time somebody comes in if it's not uh, the main family members he usually snaps at them so people get scared and he doesn't take too well with kids he almost bit my baby cousins back then so and everybody was always mad at him so I really really felt bad <laughs> my brother would constantly joke about it too that every time he sees me you know cuddling and giving like the best lives I am giving right now to the girls versus how Sam was he would feel bad ah uh, okay he would feel bad about um, how Sam was because I also felt bad because I was still a student back then ah okay let's keep it short I was still a student back then I can't uh, it was my parents spending for my dogs and they weren't really o open to like spending for him for the vet so uh, uh, I, there was nothing there wasn't a lot that I could do for him let's just end it there <sighs> hmm. thank you for subscribing to the channel so yeah socializing to people that for me is most important because it, it's painful to see people disliking your the things that you love right so if you love your dog so much and you see people disliking them and hating them it's it's not nice <laughs> mm, sorry <laughs> i'm getting emotional because i i really felt so bad for him because i knew it was my fault but at the same time i couldn't i have no full control over it since i was still a student and i wasn't earning my own money how do you brush their teeth and cut their nails uh it's actually very easy um <laughs> the thing is my dogs don't have any choice if i they know that if i do something they're forced to tolerate me and sometimes i feel bad that's why i always just reward them for it so for the cutting of nails i usually do it every two weeks and during bath time so i have them bathe first so that the nails would get softer and stuff and that's where i cut it but of course you cannot do it if you do not socialize your pets to the grooming tools my groomer so i'll have a video on that it's it won't be a sit down video or anything it's just like a montage of what happened my groomer is always telling me how much he loves grooming the girls because <laughs> more often than not people take their dogs to the groomer because they're already matted and it needs to be fixed and stuff but every time he grooms my dogs he said that they're one of the very very few that gets groomed for to make them look pretty and stuff and they don't have mats so it's easy for him not to mention the girls, when they get groomed, they just stand still. They're literally just dolls. And he can do whatever he wants to do with them. So, yeah. How to brush their teeth and nails. I will try to make a video on that. Because it's very hard to describe how to do it. <laughs> I almost got it. I almost pronounced it correctly. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so my puppy starts crying as soon as I leave the room and he doesn't stop. What do you recommend? So I have a video coming up on that. So what I actually just do is I just ignore it. So dogs respond to movement. Um, for example, play biting. 
when a puppy play bites, the first thing we will do is no, no, no. And we do a lot of gestures and stuff. And that does not tell the puppy no. We have to understand that they speak a different language because they are dogs. We are humans. They do not understand our language. No doesn't mean no to them. No for them is you stopping whatever it is that you're doing and completely ignoring them. That's how dogs behave. So if you would notice, when a dog gets mad, so there are times when you, I, I don't know if you have seen any videos in, or dogs interacting in par dog parks. When a dog gets hurt, it barks and snaps and then walks away. That's their social behavior. When they've had enough, they will tell the dog, they'll give warnings, and if the dog doesn't stop, that's when they snap. And then the first thing that they will do is actually walk away. They will not challenge the dog unless unless the do other dog persists that's where the fight happens so I, I learned all this from my trainer and i could be wrong on certain things but as far as i know this is what happens and so when a dog play bites or what was the question the barking or when there's a behavior that's being exhibited that you do not want the only thing that you can really do if you don't want to go into the extremes is to just stop to stop paying attention to it. Don't do anything. Walk away and ignore it. Wait for them to stop and then go back right in and then reward it. Because that's what you want. You mark the behavior of them stopping whatever it is that they're doing. Example is the crying and the barking. And you reinforce that behavior because every time you do that, it tells the dog that, oh, so if I stop barking, then she comes to me. It's not when I start crying, she comes to me. Because the more you give attention when they ask for it, the more you reinforce the behavior that you don't want. So with Finn, <laughs> for two weeks, I was just ignoring the behavior. I forced my whole family to ignore him, and I heard a lot of ear, um, I heard an earful from every single one of them about how noisy he was and how everything it was. But after two weeks, this is what I have because this is not possible for the first two weeks, which is why I, I couldn't also do lives back then because the only thing you will hear is him crying nonstop. So, yeah, that's the only thing you can do: ignore the behavior and then reward when he stops because that's what I did with Finn. When I, I would always leave him here. I'm just outside the door. When he's crying, and he would cry sometimes for hours, I will not come in. I will wait for him to stop crying and then that's when I come back to pet him and stuff and give him the attention. And he doesn't get the attention when he asks for it. I give it when I want to give it. That, that, that's my rule. But, to some people, it may be too extreme and heartless, but I have to do what I have to do to make them live with my family, okay? If it were just me, that's a totally different story. But nonetheless, I would want them to be accepted by other people because I don't want to create another Sam. Whew. Yes. I will do a video on their nails. Socialization on different things. I'll do short videos on each one of them because I guess I, I find it boring when it comes to those things. But it's also important and I understand. And I, if it will help other people, by all means. Oh, thank you. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm very emotional when it comes to Sam. Uh, because I really felt bad for that dog. <sighs> so I'm making up for it with the two girls. All right, so I am training my six month old puppy to pee in the garden. It's doing great, but whenever we're inside, she still pees on the floor instead of the mat. Any help? I'm on the, sec I'm on the second and it's too much trouble. So it depends on how you train their, the dogs first. Again, I have an upcoming video on an updated potty training because this time nobody buys newspaper anymore. So we don't have newspaper in the house. 
So I was forced to use the potty pad. So it's an updated video on the same pattern when it comes to the newspaper training, but I replaced it with the wee pads. And I think it would answer people if let's say you have a carpeted floor, it would work better than the messy newspaper, of course. But it does slow down a little bit because there is no scent marker, unlike the newspaper, but it works. So for Finn's body training, I started with the wee pads and it's I controlled where he stays for the first few days to um, to gear him up for success because if I just let him loose all over my room, he would be marking every single part of the room because again, he's a male dog and that would kind of slow down the potty training. But if you can find them in a certain small space first, then you would encourage the behavior. And for, let's say, when they're downstairs, there's a pee pad wherein I don't clean it up right away. So long as we can still tolerate the smell, I do not throw the wee pad right away because I want the scent of the pee to be there because they will use that. It's their instinct to find the, the same scent where they peed on and they will still pee on it. So maybe that's what you can do. Um, find a mat or the pee pad or wherever you want your dog to pee. Don't clean it up for a while and then leave it in one space in the house where you want to encourage them to do their business because there is one area downstairs where I always put the wee pad. Even if there's no wee pad there, that's where Finn will automatically run to pee. And then there's another area in the living, in the living space, which I didn't want, but I may have missed cleaning it up. So there is that mark of the pee smell. So he would also pee there. But those are just the two places downstairs, which is kind of okay because he's still a puppy. Um, one thing to know is when they're puppies, there will still always be mistakes. Don't overthink it. But as they get older, what's more important is you see them um, going to the place where the, you want them to go and they do it on your command as well. Either or, it still works. So long as they, it sh they show you that they know where to go, that's already a good sign because the mistakes will always happen. Even Bailey still makes mistakes, but the mistake of Bailey is not really because it's a mistake. It's more of when she gets anxious about certain things. For example, when I brought home Finn and he, she sees me cuddling with him and not paying attention to her, she, got, she kind of gets stressed because she has sit banks, separation anxiety with me. And more often than not, she would poop on a random space in the house just to get my attention. So yeah, it can still happen. Whew. Right. Okay, that's good. You also wait for three seconds of quiet. Yeah, that's good. And then over time, you can extend that. You can make it five seconds and then 10 seconds and then wait until you can do it for maybe a few minutes. That's, that's how you kind of train the dog to extend their patience and stuff. <laughs> Two weeks is not normal. <laughs> What's normal for me, I think, is a few days. Finn was just an extra case. Believe me, he... he, he he was just something else <laughs> because I remember my mom, <laughs> the first few days he was here, she's like, oh my gosh, what is, what kind of dog is that? Um, not to be discouraged, um, not to belittle uh, the dogs that are in shelters or anything, but the thing is in the past or for my mom's generation, that's how they would describe a terrible dog or... Um, a dog without breed so <laughs> her phrase was what kind of mutt is that because she couldn't believe that a purebred pup would be exhibiting the same behaviors which is why um, I was telling her mom it's not because of the breed it's not because of what the puppy is or how much a puppy is it's really the personality of the dog so Finn is just naturally like that he he's not as quiet as summer he's not as obedient and chill and uh he he is energetic 
but not on a different level as Bailey when it comes to energy. It is what it is. <laughs> and the first thing she asked me was, can you train that dog? I'm like, um, we'll see. <laughs> but in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this pup? But thankfully, we survived and what we did worked. So, yeah, I'm just thankful for that. I just kept that like, yeah, it's going to be fine. But then deep inside, I was like, holy crap. Will I be able to fix this? But yeah, with, with persistence comes the rewards. So it's, it's, it's possible. Okay. Niha, neha. How to deal with a picky eater? My toy poodle would not eat food but would eat his poop. I'm not so sure about the poop part, but for the picky eaters, when you're feeding dog food, it's a little hard to give you exact um, suggestions of what to do. But you can try exercising them before they eat because when they're tired, chances are they will surely eat their food. Um, that's what I do with Miss Summer over here. I always exercise her before she eats, when she doesn't want to eat. Because when they use up all their energy, then ch chances are they will really eat. Bailey is not, doesn't have that issue at all. But there are dogs, you also have to understand that every dog, I, I keep mentioning it, every dog is different. So Summer, I believe she self-regulates her nutrition and food intake because she never really gets like as big as Bailey or as crazy fat as Bailey because when she does get when, when she does gain weight for some reason that's when she starts getting picky with her food or doesn't want to touch her food and stuff and I think it's her way of controlling her amount of intake because she thinks that she doesn't need it that's why she also sleeps a lot I guess so it, it really it really depends um, the only thing that kind of solved the problem of them being extra, extra picky was when I shifted them from dog food to home cooked. Now, I'm not saying it's the solution to it, but that solution worked for me. Or you can try to add things to the food, but sometimes that kind of encourages um, picky eaters more. There's another method which my trainer encouraged me to do at first, but again, it did not work for Bailey because of her stomach problems. So what he said was to give a time frame of when you give them their food. If they don't take the food, then you take it away. It's either they eat it or they don't eat at all. That might work for certain dogs. You can try that, but make sure that you are... Um, on guard as well because you wouldn't want what happened to Bailey because I tried doing that and I'm not blam blaming my trainer for it because nobody knew that she had that kind of um, health problems. So that kind of training kind of developed into her hyperacidity and um, bad case of acid reflux. So see what works well for your dogs <clears throat> okay can you somebody is asking if you can use just regular paper that kind of beats the purpose because for one honestly newspaper training is a little messy but the only reason why i like it is because of the scent of the newspaper if there is no scent, there is no marker of where they need to go or and encourage them or to lead them, to guide them where to go. If you're just going to be using paper, might as well just use the pee pads and then do not clean up the pee from the pee pad and use that as the scent marker for your pup. Hi, Melia. Uh, yeah, honestly, I... I this this my streams i keep saying it in the beginning that i would just end it in 30 minutes but i just keep blabbering on and on if you guys would notice i am very very talkative but i wasn't like this when i was a kid i was actually a very um an introvert an extra extra extreme introvert so surprisingly i never thought that i would be doing anything like this at all 
What are the possible reasons for aggressiveness? How can we prevent it on our pups and how can we prevent biting? Um, aggression. Aggression is really more of like a personality of a dog and something that may have been triggered or reinforced as pups. It depends. The only aggressive pup I've ever experienced training was a chow chow named Eclair. Maybe a few, how many years ago was it when Tony left? Maybe three, three, four years ago. And <laughs> I was bitten by that dog. So I volunteered to um, home her for a few months until Tony would be able to fly her to the States or find a good home for her. <laughs> the breeder! Oh, okay, so Tony owns the male dog and then there is the breeder, the owner of the dam, who um, took care of the pups and stuff. And let's just call her the breeder. So the breeder gave me a Claire, but did not tell me <laughs> that she was scared of strangers. And I never really researched how chows are. And I assumed that um, the chow would be much like the parents, namely the dad, that is one of the most friendly chows I've ever met. And the first thing that she did was bite me. So the first day we met, she bit me. And she was showing signs of aggression. Um, thankfully, she was still a puppy, but she was a big puppy. And um, I wasn't provided a crate, as usual. So I had to keep her on the passenger seat of my car. And when we were about to go down, she started um, kind of denning on the car seat. And... Oh my gosh, it was so scary because I, I knew she was ready to charge. She was ready to bite. True enough, she did. And um, I was so scared because I didn't know how to lure her out because I had to get her out of the car. So what I did was give her a treat. And when I gave her the treat, she kind of mellowed down a little bit. And I was able to carry her to the playpen that I prepared in the backyard. So for aggression... What did I do for Claire? I think the first thing we did was food manners because controlling their food, showing them who gives them their food kind of shows authority and you kind of show some sort of dominance in a non-aggressive way. So that was a start. I had to control um, her, um, how she takes the food. So you can start with that. Uh, aggression is triggered usually also by guarding. So my trainer said it was to start with that and then work towards whatever needs to be worked on. I know it's a little bit confusing, which is why every time it's about training, I always make a video of it. It's so hard to discuss it and then you don't see it because it's all theory and you don't get to see the dynamics of it. But I hope it helps. Whew. My puppy likes to chew on the sides of the pee pads. Finn loves doing that too, don't worry. It's very normal. Summer did the same thing. How can you make them understand that the pee pads are for their pee and poop? I'm pretty sure they understand. It's just that puppies are puppies. They will chew on everything. They, they, they nibble on things. When they're bored, that's when they do it. When Finn is bored, he would chew on the pee pad. So... <laughs> Be ready for some of the videos <laughs> because, oh my gosh, honestly, the things that I did there are embarrassing because, for example, when it comes to the pee pad, okay, you have to communicate to dogs how they would communicate to other dogs. And that's what I learned from my trainer. So for uh, certain things that I disliked, I would have to act like a dog. <laughs> And for example, the play biting. When he starts play biting, I would tolerate it for some time. But when it starts getting painful, when he starts kind of using his teeth and kind of um, put more pressure, then it's not painful yet. But I want to prevent him from doing that. I would yelp or almost 
like try to imitate like a bark sound or if if you can't do it then you can just say ow and then pull away and then walk away so that's the same thing with the pee pad when he starts doing it i would yelp or i would um claim the space on the pee pad so i would just literally just put my hand in front of it and claim it when he starts bark um nipping on my hand i would yelp and walk away or <laughs> it's super weird but i promise it works show your teeth because that's how bailey does it when i would see her trying to stop finn when she starts showing her teeth like going like that <laughs> which is so weird that's telling them you better stop because i'm getting mad it's weird but it works it really works rather than hitting pups because <sighs> my family also has that they just tell me just hit the dog just show dominance and I learned that the hard way when I did that I just scared the dog and I don't want to do that ever again and even if the, this method is weird it works best okay let's leave it at that okay so Niha, Neha, he would wait for the entire day before he eats his food. He is fine eating treats, but he does not want to eat the commercial diet. My vet has asked not to introduce a lot of things to him. That's very normal. Um, any vet would say the same thing, and I agree, because puppies have sensitive stomachs. It's best to slowly introduce them to new things, not all at the same time because sometimes their stomach are, if their stomach is not made for it and then they're not used to it, it might just trigger something and they would just vomit it out and that was what happened with one of the treats that i tried giving finn he actually just vomited it out but that did not stop me from giving it to him i would just give it in smaller pieces and maybe just one and then over time as he builds tolerance towards it i would give him more so that's what you can do for the picky eating it could be that your dog is not releasing an, um, energy enough, so he doesn't require the replenishment that you're trying to give him because food is energy. And your dogs, maybe your dog is self-regulating. It really depends. Do not take whatever I say with a grain of salt. It, it really depends on your pups. Because sometimes summer is like that too. If I don't get to exercise them for a few days, because let's say the weather is not working or I was too busy and stuff. <laughs> so much for me saying make time. So I try as much as I can to make time, but there are just days that are like that and I try to make up for it. So when I don't get them to exercise, summer tends to not eat um, both meals in the morning and in the afternoon. She would only eat one meal. And I would assume, and so long as she's fine, it's because she's self-regulating. She doesn't need the extra replenishment of food. So what I would do is I would just give her extra treats. But I do not give it as a replacement for the food. Meaning, let's say if she doesn't eat her um, meal, I would not give her the treat. I would give it later on wherein I take away the food already. And she doesn't associate it when she doesn't want to eat her food then she gets the treat because if you keep doing that then the dog will automatically assume okay if i don't eat my food she will just give me a treat or he will just give me a treat and that's a behavior you wouldn't want because that will just encourage the picky eating and them being so selective of what they eat or what you give them okay Whew. any suggestion for food toppers that depends on the track that you want to take your dogs to. Um, if you want to go the all natural way, then you can do food toppers. Um, I started a small business on it. You can try that. We have food toppers. I am part owner of Pothic Plate, the brand. And um, the main reason I started that was because of the picky eaters over here. I used to buy the treats, and back then there weren't a lot of all-natural treats in the Philippines in 2014. 
I would always import from Japan or when I fly to Singapore or the States, I would buy those treats, so which is why we started it. I was working with um, my friends from Singapore. There was a brand that they were working on back there. When it closed down, um, they encouraged me to start it here and that's how it happened. So that's one option, that's a food dopper. You can also boil pumpkin. Pumpkin is good for your dogs because it provides fiber and it kind of kind of helps firming up the poop if it's soft. You can use that as a food topper or some people would even boil chicken liver or beef liver or pork liver as a food topper, but make sure to limit it because too much liver isn't really good for your pups as well. Although liver is very good for your pups. So anything in excess could be bad. Just be careful. What other food toppers did I put for my girls? So those are usually the add-ons because one thing to note with dog food, it's completely balanced. So it's, it, it's a complete meal. That's the upside of dog food, which is why it's very convenient for a lot of people. When you start cooking for your dogs or you feed them raw, um, there is no perfect way to completely balance the meal, which is why you need supplements. Okay, what time do you make your puppy go to bed and wake up in the morning to pee? I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning and it re it's really getting to me. <laughs> Sorry for the, all the bathroom questions. No, 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 it's fine. It's totally fine. Okay, so the reason why I super take uh, potty training and crate training seriously the first week is because I want to limit the time where I have to follow a really, really strict schedule and I would have to wake up. So I couldn't be thankful enough that my brother, my brother was given an Echo Dot. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's like Google Home or it's basically Alexa. Oh no, she activated. So it's the one that you, uh, it's the AI that does voice commands and stuff. So he wasn't able to work it out and then I was able to figure it out and was able to make it work. <laughs> so for the first few days of Finn for potty training, we would literally, my, my cousin and I would take turns waking up every three hours. But take note, the first day when we arrived, we were so tired because the drive to pick up Finn was really long. And then we had to go to the vet right after. And right after that, I would have to go straight to my teaching class. <laughs> so I was really exhausted that day. But then nonetheless, we had to do the um, potty training and the crate training because there was no other way. So we would wake up every three hours for the first few nights strictly because we would lock him in when he's not allowed to go pee and then let him out and stuff. So creating a schedule like that will work and create a routine until your pup gets used to, you know, peeing in the potty pad. So now, since I saw that he was ready, I no longer actually close the door of the crate. If you can see, he went straight in on his own. That's me not forcing him. I don't even have to give him a treat. It's because it's a natural behavior for dogs to stay inside a den. So it's just, the crate is not cruel. So long as you don't shove them in and then make them stay there without them doing it on their own. It's not cruel because dogs are natural denning animals. A den, you guys know what a den is, right? It's basically a small space wherein they uh, squeeze themselves in, which is why the crate help, um, reinforces that or kind of uses their instinct for that to encourage them to do that. And it's natural for dogs not to do their business inside their den because it's their home. It's their safe place. It's their safe haven. So now... There's just a wee pad there, and then the crate is there. The door is open. Anytime he needs to wake up, he just goes to the potty pad and then goes back in. So I don't have to wake up anymore. So the first few nights of sacrifice, the first week at least, is enough. So it's only a week of doing that, and the rest is going to be a breeze. Trust me. So that's how I did it. But yes, it's a sacrifice. So for Finn, the first night... We fed him at 7.30 p.m. 
And then we would ask him to go inside the crate for maybe five to ten minutes because he instantly pees and poops after five to ten minutes. So we would release him and put him in the potty pad. And then we would play with him and then he would go to bed around nine, regardless of whether we will sleep or not. Of course, he starts crying. So when he starts crying, we leave the room and then go back when he's ready. And then in the morning, we usually feed him at 7.30 also in the morning and then 12.30 in, at noon. So the same routine. You just have to create that schedule. And we only strictly followed that schedule for three days. Because after three days, he was basically potty trained already. And we just left the door open like that. And he does it on his own. So, Melia, do you have any tips in getting a hold of a reputable breeder? Every time I contact several, there, there's never a response. I do not like talking about... Um, breeders in general because again everybody has their own opinions about what's right and what's wrong and i find it unfair to a certain extent that i impose my ideas on other people which is why i created a video on my opinions of what a breeder should or should not be maybe you can check it out i'm not sure if you've already checked that out but there are several red flags for me for the breeders but nonetheless those those things that i said are too idealistic honestly i'm not saying that it's impossible to find a breeder with that will fit in all those traits but it's very 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 difficult and for finn i did we did make compromises and you will also make your own compromises but it never hurts to know um, those things and I'm not saying it's the general it's the best rule it's not the only right rule there are so many videos on YouTube feel free to check them out and it's really up to you to maybe pick up the insights that work best for your personality and that resonates with your values because it's really hard <laughs> and it's such a big responsibility for me to let's say tell you what's best for me because um, it's different for every country as well. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, food drop rares. Do you ship internationally in India? I usually import from the US. Before COVID, yes, but right now, no. Food toppers in India. I'm not sure if you're able to um, buy from Amazon. There are food toppers there. But you know what? Why not just make your own? It, it wouldn't hurt to make your own. I have a recipe that I shared on the channel as well. You can use that as a food topper. It could be used as a replacement meal, but at the same time, it could be a food topper. Just in, encourage feeding. There are a lot of people who did it. It's actually very cheap to make your own toppers. Um, it, it's not that complicated, so long as your dog doesn't have allergies to the food that you're giving them. Give it a shot. Okay, how do you transition the... Ah, oops, I skipped the question. How do you feed raw food? Uh, okay. One thing to note, Summer is not a big fan of raw, but Bailey likes raw. So I took some courses from, I mentioned it many times before, D&M University, and then there were a few more, I forgot. But there are a lot of books as well. If you guys are interested, I could make a video on the books that I would recommend if you want to start going all natural. I only bought those books from Amazon. They're all available. And I think Amazon is the store that is most accessible to a lot of countries. So you can buy them. Or if you have bookstores, you can also request for the titles. I think you just have to make a down payment and then they will ship the book for you. How do I feed raw? I started with just giving them chunks of sliced chicken because their favorite meat is chicken. 
So I started with the chicken breast, just giving it as a treat. And then over time, once I saw that they were okay with it and their stomachs don't really react too much to it, I started giving them like a portion of their meal as raw. But again, I don't do it very often because it's, it's so difficult. It's difficult enough to prepare your own dog food. What's more, it, if you give them separate things at the same time, oh, that's a total nightmare. And that's too much work for me. So right now they're mostly on home cooked, but occasionally I still give Bailey raw just for a change from time to time. And I try to give Summer too. Sometimes she eats it, sometimes she don't. So it's, it's really hard. If she doesn't eat it, I give it to Bailey, which is why she gets extra fat too. It's my fault. And yeah, um, w the only thing that's scary about raw is like balancing it out. And the thing is preparation of um, raw meat is a lot more delicate than cooked food because raw meat, you only have like a certain time that it will stay fresh and then and then there's also, you know, temperature, humidity, and so many things that you have to consider. It's hard, which is why it's also good if you're going to be feeding raw, buying from a reputable brand that knows what they're doing and not just doing things for profit. It really helps. Um, ask them the proper process, how they manage the food, how they freeze it, because if it's not frozen, um, in a certain span of time. I know this because my dad is a chef and he is particular when it comes to us handling raw meat, especially with the business that I started. One of the first things that I was scolded for was how I was handling the raw meat, how I was freezing it. So it turns out you cannot unfreeze something and then freeze it again. Because once you defrost something, that's it. You, if you refreeze it, it will already start Regard, it will start developing bacteria nonetheless. A certain kind of bacteria that develops after if um, the food, the raw food goes back and forth, which is why if you're going to buy those pre-packed raw meals, I suggest you have them like sliced into like dices and cubes so that you will just defrost um, the portion that you need. You cannot defrost the whole thing. As far as I recall, dad said, uh, defrost food will only last for maybe overnight. After that, it will start developing bad bacteria that's not good for ingestion. Again, dogs and humans are totally different. Those standards are based on humans as well. But since I'm not really familiar with how it is when it comes to dogs and their limitations, I just stick to the standards for the humans for safety but feel free to check it out for raw food also those who are worried dogs have stronger stomachs than humans and they're really fine with it, it it's regardless of size and breed um, they're okay with raw mm. it, it it's really just up to you how you would take it and I respect people for whatever it is that they believe so long as they respect mine too <laughs> Let's live and let live. <sighs> How do you transition them? I hope I was able to answer when it comes to the food. Um, feel free to message me also on the social channels if you have more questions about it. I'm all over the place when it comes to lives like this. How do you transition them from the pee pad to going, to going inside? What do you mean? Going inside where? Like, or do you mean going outside the potty? I didn't need to teach Finn to be in the garden. Probably because I have two dogs already and he would just follow their example. So they were the best teachers. <laughs> My little assistants who did more work than I did. So Leslie Rodalia, don't feel bad about Sam. We all have our learning experiences. You're doing better now, which means you'll learn from your mistakes. That's gross. Thank you. Yes, I definitely learned a lot from that. Ah, okay, outside. 
like I said, um, the girls taught him how to do that. But one thing I did in the beginning was, okay, when I, the first few nights with Finn, I never carried him going down. He always goes up and down my room from here to the garden and the play area downstairs inside the crate. So when I let him out, I always go straight to the garden where the girls pee because the scent of the pee is there. So when I let him out, he actually starts peeing there by, by instinct. So that's what you can do. Um, limit, bring them to the place where you want them to pee because the minute they smell something, they will automatically, automatically mark the location where you want or they will do their business, especially if you have other dogs who do it. It's natural for a dog, so let's say a dog pees, and then there's another dog, they will automatically mark where, they will pee where the other dog peed also. It's just natural behavior. Okay, my poodle is potty trained, but not kept in a crate. Do you think a crate could help with this poop eating? He appears to be doing it out of boredom in the morning when I'm sleeping. Yes. The crate training would help because you would be able to control his space and there would be a space wherein he cannot um, he, he, he cannot do his business there he will because he will he will naturally protect his den you're most welcome I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Neha. Okay, can you give them treats as early as eight weeks? Yes, so long as they don't have allergies to the treats. I suggest giving them natural treats more than those commercial treats like pedigree and stuff. That's what the, that, those are the few things that I gave my girls first, which was why I think they had developed a lot of allergies because it has a lot of ingredients. So the less ingredients, the better, because that way you can isolate if it triggers something. If it's a single protein ingredient or a single ingredient like vegetable or something, you would automatically know that that may have been the cause of the allergy because it was the only thing that was different from their routine. How can I probably introduce a new puppy with older dogs? They are very territorial and have a history of literally biting aggressively the neck of any animal that comes close into them. Okay, like I said, I will be having a video that will come out wherein I introduced the two girls to Finn. Now, this would depend on how trained your other dogs are too. Um, Bailey is naturally territorial. Summer doesn't really care. Which is why I had to introduce them in neutral space. So they met, like I mentioned in a previous video, they met outside, uh, outside of the house. One thing you can do is to exercise your dog before they meet, which was what I did with the girls. And you will see that in an up upcoming video. I exercised them first and then I brought out, I had Finn brought out and the the girls can only approach him when they are a little bit more relaxed so the video was a little rushed so you would have to forgive me but so long as they're not calm and relaxed they are not able to meet with summer it wasn't re i didn't take her calming down too seriously because i knew she wasn't a very territorial pup and she would just ignore other dogs. But with Bailey, I had to be more strict with her because she's the one who snaps at dogs that are overly energetic. And mm, this pup is the epitome of what hyper and energetic is. Bailey dislikes that a lot. So I tired Bailey out first and then wait for her to calm down before I let her approach Finn. So that's a start. And this will only work again if you have full control of your pup because um, if you do not have control over the older dogs it's natural for them to become territorial and how would you be able to control 
the situation. So having a slip leash also helps, but again, it depends from owner to owner what you are willing to um, tolerate and if you're able to use it properly. Slip leashes work best for me. It might not work best for other people. For example, Victoria of It's Me or the Dog doesn't like slip leashes a lot. Um, she uses other things. I forgot. She showed it in one video. But she doesn't like slip leashes or those choke collars. The slip leash kind of is similar in concept with um, the choke collars. But the difference is the slip leash only tightens when the dog um, gets tense. And it's my dogs are taught not to pull on the leash. So it's more of me tugging to snap them out of a certain behavior that I don't want them exhibiting. So it's my only form of control. And it's not tied here. This is where it's bad when the choke collars are because it can damage the throat. So the slip leash should actually be around the jaw area of the dog. So if you don't know how to use it properly, I don't suggest using the slip leash method. So yeah, Int um, introduce your new pups and the old dogs in neutral ground. And then the first dog that will go inside the house will be the new dog, followed by calm older dogs. <clears throat> we currently have a poodle in a small area in our house no crate would you suggest opening up the whole house to him as always he pees and poo on the floor in this small area so long as you think that your dog is already completely potty trained i don't think there's anything wrong of letting them loose around the house in the beginning also finn was only confined in the playpen area in our small terrace downstairs he was not able to go out and enter the house until he was completely potty trained so he's only let out for play after he already does his business for a few minutes and then he goes back in so it the play pen becomes his play area and crate in the morning and at night the crate is inside the play pen so that's how we kind of controlled it so I think in your case, the playpen is that small area in your house where you let the dog loose. And if he has already mastered that space, you can slowly um, increase the space where he can access it and see if he would still run straight to where he needs to go. But don't forget, puppies cannot hold their pee for very long. So if the space is too big, they might not, even if they want to go to the pee area, they might not reach it so it might help if you can put like multiple um, pee areas on certain places as they are growing up because over time once they're able to fully control their bladder you can take away those things i think i answered this question already how i feed my girls raw i like i said i started with giving them raw as treats and over time as they get they got used to it i just put it in their bowl and they eat it uh for defrosting i have small containers wherein the raw food is and then i just defrost one at a time because like i said my dad is particular when it comes to handling raw food So Deb, I'm getting my first poodle in two months. Do you have any tips on what to do for the first night? Yes, there is a video on that coming up as well. For the first night, potty training and crate training is number one. Focus on those two things because promise that will keep you sane for the rest of the week. But it is, it, it's a painful first three days, which is why I recommend that when you get your pup, make sure you have at least three days with them so if maybe you can get them on a Friday so that you have Saturday and Sunday for sure free that's best because it's very tiring for the first two days so at least you have one rest day right after because I cannot imagine doing what I did <laughs> if I had work the next day because I would go insane because you will literally be not be able to sleep 
because you wake up every three hours. Or if you have a two-month-old puppy, then you wake up every two hours to make them go potty. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria uses muzzles. Yes! Um, the one around the snout, I think. That's another method. And again, it depends from dog to dog and from owner to owner. Since the slip leash worked for me, I don't see anything wrong with it. And it doesn't hurt my pups anyway. You are most welcome. Um, I try. I would love to see a more detailed video on preparation of raw food. There are actually a lot of channels doing raw food. Um, but if you want, sure, why not? I'll make a video on it. For eating too fast, you can get those slow bowls. Um, the girls don't really have that problem. So I prefer the stainless steel bowls like I mentioned before. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is record breaking again. How many hours has it been? An hour and a half? <laughs> Thank you for trusting me. I hope I will not betray that trust. But yeah, um, please, please take everything I say with a grain of salt and use whatever I say as source of, of insights and still make your own decision for you, not because I said it. Um, it's best to trust your instincts too. <laughs> That's all I did, honestly. Um, one of the reasons why I started this channel is because back then it was so hard to find information and then I thought, you know, it wouldn't hurt to maybe share those things if it will make other people's lives easier. And it's my way of documenting things with the girls because that was one big regret also with Sam. I don't even have, I only have one picture of Sam and it was, it's such a blurry picture. I could, I can't even print it. I could only print it like in a small paper like that and, and that's it. I don't have a picture with him. So as much as I can, I try to um, have as much memories with them because I know it's not forever. Thank you. <laughs> I think so too. The people who stick around the channel and I really, really appreciate you guys. It's because I feel like um, I have some sort of connection with you guys because I think our views and maybe certain values, we resonate with each other. So it, it's, it's really amazing. I was honestly scared of like with this channel, if it starts growing and stuff, you know, the hate, I mean, there's always people who will disagree with you and everything. There will always be haters. And I was ready. I was preparing for that. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that um, I haven't received a lot of hate. Not that I'm wish, wishing for it. I, I, I really want to keep it that way. But, yeah, <laughs> super thankful. So, thank you, thank you. Right. So... I have been trying, I actually, my brother has been trying to do the raffle and there is a technical issue. Um, if you can see here, YouTube is not working properly and we have been getting errors on the app. So here's what I'll do. I'll just try to fix it because I don't want to take more, much more of your time. We'll do the raffle. I'll take a live video of the raffle and then just post it as an uh, extra video on our IG stories, um, TikTok, as well as the Facebook page and the Facebook group. We'll post it all there for the winners. And <laughs> I did something stupid. I also forgot to ask you guys to put a hashtag on your um, answers for your <laughs> location at least the country <laughs> because how will i know if <laughs> you're international or the philippines so i'll figure it out la uh, later maybe i can just draw and then check for the locations we'll see i'll figure it out okay so i won't take so much more of your time thank you guys so much for sticking around look forward to the future videos on training i have them in succession already I have just been getting lazy to edit. Um, 
it's one thing to shoot videos and it's another thing to edit. Don't get me wrong, I really love editing. It's just that um, all those videos and compiling them, ugh, it's, it's becoming a nightmare, but it's gonna be fun. And I, I will try as best as I can to make it as comprehensive as I can. Okay. You guys really enjoy lives. I, I, I get scared of lives because <laughs> I'm all over the place. But if you guys want more lives, then sure, why not? Yes. Uh, I, I'm also very excited for the future videos. Uh, <laughs> you will judge me <laughs> for a lot of the videos <laughs> because really, those are things you would feel embarrassed to do, but I swear they work. And <coughs> I give options of what you can do anyway. I hope so. Okay, anyway, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around and for subscribing. I, uh, we really appreciate it. The girls are asleep. I am so sorry. Let me show you madam. So she's she's so small now because I had her groomed. Right? Yeah, I know. You hate me for waking you up, huh? Okay. We'll see you guys around. Bye. Hmm. Add the training buttons. I have those. Wait. Let me show you. Ooh. Because I'm a big fan of that standard poodle. These ones, I've been training them to use words, but Madame left me because she's tired. It's a lot easier for bigger dogs to be able to do it. For smaller dogs, well, then again, those are the cheap um, buttons. Maybe I can get the buttons that are softer to press because they, it takes a while for them to press. Okay, that's it. Bye. How do I end this again? I know. <laughs> Summer. How do I end this again? Holy moly. What is happening? Ah, there. Okay. And.